We'll just finish off with John. Oh, sorry, am I in the camera? Uh, a little bit. Sorry, am I ruining it? <laughs> a little bit. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> John's a good guy. Good talk. <laughs> so here we go. And we are back between two Yetis with our good friend John Jarvie from Overseas Yacht Insurance. How are you, buddy? I'm good. How are you? So your new anniversary. We are back here day four of the Miami Boat Show. Exactly yesterday when you did it last time. And twisting your arm, we just wanted to see if you give us an update on Hurricane Irma and uh, how that affected the yacht industry and more importantly the insurance industry. Um, well, from an insurance perspective, we not only had Irma, we had three hurricanes basically in a row. Yeah. So we didn't just have our most devastating hurricane season by one storm, we had it by three. And then from a, an insurance industry perspective, we also had the fires in California, the earthquake in Mexico City. I mean, there's a lot of things uh, worldwide that have impact the rates of insurance. So we but had a pretty bad year. It was yeah, pretty harsh. We had a good year, but the insurance industry as a whole uh, took some big hits last year. But uh, there's still so much capacity out there that there are many, many insurance companies who can still offer good coverage, who can put everything on the policy that needs to be there, and uh, for decent rates. But especially over in, uh, in London, a lot of the Lloyds carriers took a probably the most massive hit. Um, and a lot of the U.S. carriers don't seem to be have, having as much of an increase in pricing right. as, uh, as the non-admitted uh, London but carriers. That's the knock-on effect, though, isn't it? You have a hurricane out there, everyone pays out, and your rates go up, right? Essentially, most boaters are going to feel some type of increase, even if they didn't have a claim. Um, but, you know, marine insurance is the only one of the only parts of boating that has gone down every year for the last decade, right. while all other costs of boating have gone up. So this is the first time that it's finally sort of leveled out. But you, this, this is the old adage though, if you give something to someone, taking it away is kind of hard. So are you feeling like from your customers coming up for renewal now, is it always like, John, what the hell? And it's like, listen, it's, yes. you know, it's just, do you have to have that song and dance now with your customers where you haven't had to have it for 10 years? Yeah, uh, I think the, the, the phrase is the gifts of today become the expectations of tomorrow. And Write that down. So, yeah. so you know, everything that, that is a benefit becomes ex expected in the future. Yeah. Not just for boat insurance, but for most things. Yeah. And, um, but, but it's going to take a little bit for, for owners to, to really, number one, understand what their hurricane coverage was and what it, what it will be in the future. Yeah. There's been some changes to deductibles, changes to some of the uh, hurricane preparedness requirements. And we saw this after Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Wilma as yeah, well. Yeah. So it's it just it creates a little bit of a shakedown, but it doesn't mean that you're uninsurable. If you had a boat sink in St. Martin and you're trying to buy a new boat, can I get insurance? Everything is insurable. If, if your agent told you that it's not, you're talking to the wrong person. Does someone ever become uninsurable? Is there like a blacklist in the insurance agency in the world for clients who are repeat offenders for whatever uh, reason? I wouldn't say a blacklist. I mean, the only real blacklist would be the OFAC list, uh, where if you're a criminal, you're on a very public list. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, we, we typically say it's not the first claim that's a problem. Yeah. And no matter what happens, slip and fall, boat sinks, lightning strike, it's the second and third claim where now you've got too many losses in too short of a period where it can be difficult to get uh, a good rate on insurance. But right. you can typically still find a policy, it just gets more and more expensive. So you don't always want to use your policy just because it's there. Yeah. If, it, if, if it's just slightly higher than the deductible, the loss damage, sometimes you want to cover that yourself. Yeah. People, I think, forget that insurance is not an investment. Uh, you know, a lot of people look at insurance as, well, I paid 10 grand in premium, so they should pay out 20 grand this year. Uh, it's, it's, not an, it's not the stock market. So these yeah. insurance companies still have to make money, report to their investors, or they go out of business. Absolutely. So there's a middle ground between the two. Now, I spoke to someone last night, and he runs a business, which sounds stupid. He insures insurance policies. Is this a thing? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what you're referring to, but there is something called reinsurance. That's what he does, yeah, reinsurance. And so do they, you offer that? We do not. Reinsurance is a whole separate ball game, and most of it is done outside of the United States. But basically the way it works is the insurance companies that we all know and love, Travelers, Chubb, AIG, Lloyds, they all, instead of having all of their eggs in one basket, they buy insurance on their insurance. So basically they're splitting the risk with 
the company who insures them. Right. So there's a variety of different ways to slice those insurance policies, but all of our insurers are insured. So it's not just our insurance companies who we know that are raising the rates. The rates are going up, the premiums are going up because the reinsurers are raising the rates on the insurance companies and they have no choice but to raise the premiums to offset that. This sounds super complicated. <laughs> it can be, but mo most people don't dive into the world of, of reinsurance. It is pretty tricky, but at least you know that uh, the companies who insure our assets, our yachts, our jets, our, our cars, they they are in safe financial position, not just because of their own company, but because they have the insurance to support a Hurricane Katrina, Katrina Hurricane Irma, Wilma, Well, it's Maria. funny, I've been speaking to a lot of people, and because everyone's boats were devastated during the hurricane, there's now a backlog on new boats and everything. People can't buy new boats. It can only help the industry, can't it? I mean, yeah. and that should then, you think, bring insurance rates down as more policies are getting written and written? Or if we have another hurricane this year, are we totally screwed? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you would think if there was more volume, things would go down like, like a Costco concept. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately not, the, these insurance... Companies, yes, yeah, sort of. <laughs> they 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 can't have all their eggs in one basket. So basically, if you're uh, AIG, you can't have every one of your policies in South Florida right. because you have to have spread of risk. You need some boats in California, some in New York, some in Texas, Texas and Puerto Rico. <laughs> Hopefully not Texas and Puerto Rico as well. Yeah. But the idea is to spread the risk. So all of these new boats being <laughs> delivered, it's a good thing, but they all end up here. Yeah. So they all end up where the hurricanes come. So it's good for us, it's good for our industry, it's good for everybody on the service side yeah. of yachting because it keeps us all employed and it's, it's good for the industry, but it doesn't help premiums, unfortunately. When someone totals a boat and it's now owned by the insurance company, right? Miami's full of torn up boats, like yards are full of like hurricane and they're all for, what happens to them? People, they try and sell them at as much as they can get for them or, I mean, Essentially, down on Virginia Key, sailboats are just lined up, destroyed. Yeah. Still, and and we're well, in February. You should see St. Martin, it's still a graveyard down there. Boats everywhere. And basically there isn't enough manpower or yard power to, to fix fix these or salvage them. But when the insurance company pays off the owner, the asset belongs to the insurance company. Yes. They have uh, to get it out of St. Martin, now, don't they? Yes. And and you know, based on the regulations of cleanup and wreck removal and pollution of wherever these boats are specifically. Some might need to be moved and salvaged quicker than others. Yeah. But basically, they, they trust their uh, contacts, whether that be an adjuster, or a surveyor, or a yacht brokerage, to put these boats in an auction. And uh, right now, more than ever, these, there are tons of boats at auction, uh, but most of them were underwater. Yeah. So I don't think, or I don't know, if there are enough project buyers out there to, to buy tens of thousands of Well, maybe not, but because boats. there's so many, the price is going to go right the way down. Someone could get a steal if they're willing to put the work in. Yeah. But that brings me to another question. Like, St. Martin, it's going to be a lot more expensive for the insurance company to retrieve that asset. So does your insurance change in price depending on where you sail and where you keep it? Absolutely. Okay. And, and so some of the locations, like cruising to Cuba, for example, or cru cruising to Belize, the insurance company takes into consideration that if something happens to your boat and there isn't a high quality shipyard there to either a tow company to tow your boat in, a shipyard to, to make the repairs, your premium can be a little bit higher or maybe a higher deductible because you're in a location where it's hard to make repairs. So even these boats in St. Martin, uh, even the yards there, the ones that are still in service are completely full. You can either go to Puerto Rico, you can go to uh, over to Nanny K. There's some other locations where you can take these boats, but for the most part, there isn't enough yard space or manpower to, to work on all of these at the same time. Yeah, number one priority is getting power just got restored to most of the islands, so yes. it's going to be another year or so before this gets cleaned up, right? Yeah, unfortunately the boats and the boat owners don't always come first when you're looking at... When you're the, looking at mass, mass starvation. The and... goodwill of a country, <laughs> yeah. exactly. So, but, but they have to take all of that into consideration at the same time. It's just really devastating and really sad for, for a lot of those countries, but they'll rebuild, they'll, they'll be back. Rebuild. So insurance is always a floating, a moving target, right? It's always a moving target, and there's always new entrants to the to the insurance uh, industry, it, whether that be in yacht insurance or auto insurance. There's always new companies coming around, yeah. and for the most part, if you have your finger on the pulse, a lot of these companies can only win the business by offering additional coverages or cheaper policies or less expensive policies. So there's typically always another company 
uh, insurance company who can help you save some money or help you place coverage when the, your normal carrier won't. Is it cheaper to insure a boat, is the last question, cheaper to insure a boat in Europe rather than America because they don't have this severe weather yep. impact? It yep. is like Typically, this, yes. But they have pirates. It <laughs> yes, they can. But uh, it depends on the size of the boat. So once you get to a $10, $20 million boat, the, the rates are very competitive no matter where you are. But for the most part, yachts in the Med uh, have a much lower insurance rate than boats in South Florida. Um, but Newport, Rhode Island, great insurance premiums. California, the Great Lakes, fresh water. So it's just South Florida that's kind of right in the like wrecking zone. we were zone. discussing last year, I mean, we probably jinxed it. We didn't have a hurricane here for 10 years. They all went up the coast at North Carolina and New Jersey and New York for 10 years. Yeah. But we're still considered the hurricane hotspot. But you had an idea that we're going to have one soon and that's going to bring uh, it back down. Because I was questioning why... Is it more expensive up there now? That's still not considered out the hurricane, in a hurricane alley, right? Yeah. The insurance companies haven't... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if one day it does shift to some type of entire East Coast concept. But right now... But then boats are screwed. Like, the hurricanes come, where'd you go? Screwed. Yes. <laughs> final, fi final question for yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Last year, you were just starting your commercial division. How's that going for you? Oh, it's going very well. Thanks for asking. Um, you know, we had an opportunity. We've realized that most of the marine businesses, whether you're a dealer or a shipyard or underwater lights company, are have their insurance placed with a non-marine specialist. And that's how we were able to do such a, a good job with our yacht clients is because the majority of them are with non-yacht specialists. Absolutely. And I think it was the same with your company was oh, with yeah, a non-marine specialist. with your guy, Chris, and he looked at my policy and was like, Zach, this covers nothing. Uh, I don't know what you're playing at. I was like... <laughs> so it's a, it's a great opportunity for us um, and, and to, to work with everybody that we've been working with and friends with for all these years. Yeah. But now I think we get to offer a little bit of extra service, not just insuring the yacht once it's purchased or sold, but insuring the brokerage or the dealer or the lighting or the signage company or whatever else is involved. Big step. Yeah, it's a great step. Big risk, but uh, hopefully a big reward. Perfect. John, thank you very much for your time, buddy. Thanks, Zach. Cool. Yeah, it was really good. It was actually an interesting one. <laughs> <laughs>